Oh, thank you for joining us today. My name is Rob Miller. I'm joined by one of my colleagues, Mark Sexton, our VP of Engineering. And what we'd like to do today is walk through a case study and show how one of our customers, a top five cable provider, uses NERBY to keep their field technicians safe. We will be demonstrating um, how technicians in the field are automatically made aware of any safety hazard based solely on their current physical location. So what is NERBY? Um, we are a real-time mobile messaging platform delivering relevant multimedia content based upon the time and location of the app user. So to use an industry uh, buzzword, we are a location-based service or LBS. So using our platform, you'll be able to create geofences and associate any sort of multimedia content, be it a, uh, a text message, an image, a video, any sort of audio alerts to keep technicians in the field aware of what's going on around them. We are a geofence centric solution. So what that means is geofences are created by the mobile app user, by the technicians, um, or through the portal, which typically would be uh, with supervisors, um, by using a physical address um, or a lat and long on a map. So you could create a geofence based upon any sort of uh, physical activity that's taking place out in the field. They house any sort of work zone information created by office personnel or supervisors, managers, as well as technicians in the field. Um, as more information becomes available in the forms of messages, pictures, and videos, this multimedia content can be uploaded and shared by any user of the system and all in real time. So app users receive notifications the moment that they enter and exit a geofence and a rich amount of statistical information from the field is gathered and analyzed for continuous improvement purposes. So that's an overview of NERBY. So what we'd like to do now is, is delve into the details of how one of our customers in the telecom industry uses NERBY for field safety. Um, our customer uh, is rolling out NERBY to 2,000 technicians in the Northeast. Uh, their stated goals for the platform um, is to ensure that technicians in the field are automatically aware of any safety hazard. And when the technician, for example, hits the edge of, an, of a geofence, which is a predefined radius around a hazard, could be as small as 150 meters, uh, could be as large as really anything that would make sense. Uh, the technician is, is immediately notified with an audible alert, a vibration, or both, which they must acknowledge before it can be closed out. Um, our customer views this as a supplement to their existing um, workplace safety programs, uh, specifically like personal per, uh, protective equipment and other things that are already in place, but it helps automate those uh, programs and provides a, um, an auditing or a, an ability to see what happens as technicians enter and exit uh, geofences. So from a technician standpoint, how do they, how do they use the system and what, what benefits do they get? Uh, we'll be going into a full demonstration here in a moment, but at a high level, um, the, the technician would receive an audible alert or a notification, again, upon entering or exit, exiting a hazard zone. Uh, we call these generically geofences. Uh, these geofences can be created by supervisors or by technicians in the field. So on their app, the technician can create these geofences uh, to be able to view critical information and also create and upload their own information so that everyone using the system can stay, can stay in sync. The supervisors, they really use this as their, their command and control, if, if you will, of all hazard zones. So they'll create and close out these geofences. Um, they'll categorize the type of hazard that it is, um, of severity level, for example, or it could just be uh, a notification, an awareness of something. And they'll also set the radius 
and how long the geofence needs to stay active. It could be a geofence that only needs to be active for a few hours, uh, a couple of days or weeks, or until it uh, is resolved and the supervisor decides to, uh, to close it out. So the supervisors design and automate the process for closing out geofences, and NERBY provides them with a paper trail for which techs entered and exited hazard zones for compliance, training, auditing purposes, um, basically continuous improvement. So with that, we are going to move to the uh, to the demo. Hello, we're going to go over the portal application for the NERBY product. This is a cloud-based solution. We're going to go bring up a browser. We're going to log in. Uh, after the user logs in, what we're going to see is we're going to see the, the main dashboard. On that dashboard, we're going to see on the left-hand side a region tree. I'm going to add a subfolder for New Hampshire. So I'm going to click up a name, click NH, and that will add that underneath the U.S. region. Inside of that NH folder, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new hazard zone. Maybe a customer has called in reporting a complaint. So we're going to say customer reports a problem. We're going to enter the location. That location right now is actually where Ping 4 is located at 20 Cotton Road. Once in there, you can actually use the handles to re readjust the size of the hazard zone. You can relocate it. You can also select the satellite view and be able to zoom in to make sure that you've got the proper area selected. Once we do that, we're going to select the container, NH, and hit Create. After we hit Create, we're going to see the tree view update. We're going to be able to navigate to that newly created region. After selecting that region, we can see that there's messages and assets. Currently, there's none of those. So we're going to go to the Messages tab. We're going to create a new message. This will appear on the device when the technician arrives on scene. It's customer reports, internet and phone down, please inspect. So now we can give the directions to the individual. We're going to select the region in which the supplies. Currently we only have the one region and it's going to be an enter event. So as soon as they enter they'll get a notification with this. Once we create that we can see all the details here. One of the things that we could have done is had an end time for that which we don't need to specify. We go back to the regions, navigate back down into the folders, click on it, and now we're going to actually see under the messages tab here the message that we just added. Now we're going to look at it from the client's perspective and what the person's going to see on the phone. Now that we've seen the portal create the hazard zone, we're going to see that from the perspective of the client. So what we're going to do here is we're going to launch the client. We're going to get into uh, the map view. We're going to see that hazard zone. We see a red pin indicating that there's a message. We see the blue dot with our current location. We click on that pin. We see the customer reports a problem. Sliding it up, we get the details that was entered on the portal itself. And then down below, what we can do is we can attach assets. So what we're going to do is we're going to select a picture here that indicates the broken wire. We can optionally put a name up there uh, so that we can indicate to others what this is. So we'll enter broken, broken line, broken cable, sorry. And we're going to upload that. Once it's uploaded, you see the thumbnail on the left. Clicking on that, you can get a preview of the actual asset. So now we're going to look at that from the portal side. So we go back into the portal, navigate down through the regions. We're going to select the customer reports a problem. This time when we select the assets tab, we're actually going to see the broken cable asset. Selecting the broken cable asset, now somebody in the operation center can actually see real world updates. Okay, now that we've confirmed somebody is on site fixing that problem, what we can do is we can go in and delete that hazard zone. So we're going to go into the product, we're going to go find that hazard zone that we created, which is the only one there, customer reports a problem. Uh, we can also see that there's messages, assets associated to it. So let's go back to the details. We're going to select delete. After we delete that, it'll be removed from all technicians handsets and nobody will be notified when they enter that area. Okay, now that we've been able to go through the process of creating hazard zone on the portal, we're going to go through it all on the client. So people that run across hazards in the field are able to create these zones uh, when they see them. So we're looking at the client overview here. We're going to switch it to satellite mode. Say there was a damaged utility pole. So we're going to locate that on our map. That's a 200 meter radius. We're going to give it a name. We're going to call it hazardous pole. 
After we give it that name, we're going to click Done, then click Create down in the bottom right corner. Once we've clicked Create, that's going to create that on the server. You see the pin show up here. You'll see the region show up. We click on it. There are no messages. We're going to select from the gallery something to upload. So here's a picture of a rotted pole. So we're going to enter a description for that so other people can see it. So we can say that it's a rotted base to the pole. After we do that, we're going to click Upload. You're going to see the progress indicator here as it's uploading the file. Once it's completed its upload to the server, we're going to change that indicator on the left to the thumbnail of the image. We're going to click on it to get a preview. Everything looks good. And now we've added that to the central server in the cloud. So now we can go to the portal and see how that looks. So switching over to the portal view, we're going to look at all the regions. We can see there on the left, hazard pole, hazardous pole. That's what we just created. There's the details of that. The messages and assets. The asset, we can see the rotted base. So there's the image that we just uploaded. So the technician or the operator can look at that and understand what's going on. So we know there's no messages associated to that. However, the, the person at the operations center can actually go in and create a message now. So we're going to create a new message to indicate that the utilities have been contacted and that the poll LDS-003 has rot on the bottom. And we're going to assign that to the hazardous poll and on enter events. This allows users who enter that area to get that message as well, which is really important. So now that's all been set up, we can go back to the messages. We see the message that's there. And we're going to switch over to the client now. And we're going to actually see that pin turn red. That red pin indicates there's a message. Clicking on the pin, you see hazardous poll. And there's the message that we just distributed to everyone. OK. That concludes the demo. Um, questions? Either we'll take the ones that are written in the chat here in a moment, but um, I just unmuted everyone's phone. So uh, any questions that we can help with? OK, why don't we take the questions that were submitted over chat? We had a question about whether um, we're restricted, geofences are restricted to safety hazards. Um, so they're, they're certainly not. Um, pretty much any information that you can create a, a geofence or a virtual boundary around, um, you're able to use for use our application for. So it could be a variety of um, of types of messages uh, or or content, multimedia content. Uh, so it, it's really uh, boundless in terms of the ways that our customers are using our application. Other questions? OK, we have another question about, can you have an event marker expire after a given time? Absolutely. So the way geofences are created, it, you can set a specific time if you'd like them to be wrapped up after a certain hour, a certain number of days. Um, it really is, is at the discretion of the person who creates the geofence. And you can also put. Um, processes in place around that. In other words, you could have set automatic time frames for geofences when they're created if you'd like. So a lot of flexibility there. Absolutely. Okay. Well, hey, we'll, we'll go ahead and wrap the